Hi, I'm Ashley Appa. And I'm Hayley Tanto. Welcome to Call an Adult, a Pretty Little Liars recap podcast. Each week, we'll dive headfirst into the absolutely bonkers world of PLL as we recap the iconic series. Where everyone is hot and no one calls an adult. Let's, Let's go, go, bitches! bitches. A. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Hello, 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 Ash. How, How are, are you? you? I'm pretty well. How are you? I'm so good. Honestly, I've had brunch with a friend, I've had a coffee, and we're settling in for some recording in studio. Oh, here we are. Welcome, everyone, to season four of Pretty Little Liars. And I guess season four of Call an Adult. Crazy. Huge. I thought about it the other day. We've been doing this for three years. This I know. Third, that's fucked. Which makes sense why we're like, how come we're still on this storyline? And it's like, it's because we're slow. It's, like, we're slow. It's, it's not the show's fault. No. Haley, we're covering season four, episode one of PLL. A is for A dash L dash I dash V dash E. Alive. Alive. I was, when I wrote that down last night, I was like, God, how are we going to set, like, are we going to be like A is for alive or A is for A L I V E? I think going forward, we just say alive to say alive. time. Alive. Uh, I also would like to say, while re watching this, I realized when I watched the show for the first time, I think that I must have watched seasons one to three, like the summer or whatever, before mm. this came mm. out. I definitely binged all of them. This is the first season premiere that I was like caught up for. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I do not remember. Like, I definitely binged season one. Yep. And then I don't remember when I started kind of going weekly. And I think I would kind of catch up in batches as well. Like, I wasn't hanging on every week. Yeah. I think because we had to like stream it uh, legally. Uh, um yeah so i think i would kind of i'd fall off and then be like i'm obsessed with this this is all i care yeah. about i remember i was in year 12 which is our like senior year of school and i had friends that were so obsessed that they were like had theories and i think maybe i was yeah so i must have been watching catching up that mm. whole like year amidst study yep. breakdowns and then 2013 would be my first year of university and i was ready to jump in oh my god isn't that crazy it's so I truly remember like now that we're talking about it, yeah, having like gaps of not watching it and then becoming wholeheartedly obsessed and like not wanting to watch anything else. Yeah. Like when you finish a book and you're like, I just want to be in that book. I was like, I just want to be in Rosewood. Like Rosewood's such a bad place. Rosewood is terrifying. After burp. Uh, give the people what they want. There you go. Okay. okay. Haley, what does Australian streaming service stand say about this app? Australian streaming service Stan says, in the season premiere, the girls turn to Mona for answers. I'd say that's accurate. It's accurate. <laughs> oh, it I is. I don't know why the simplicity makes me laugh. It does, it's very funny. Um, uh, here is just some information before we get to the 12-year-olds, of course. This episode was directed by and written by the Queen. Oh. I'm Arlene King. Ooh. Important. And it aired on June 11th, 2013. So happy birthday to all the June 11 babies out there. HBD, including Kodak Black. No. Oh. Shia LaBeouf. Hey. Gene Wilder. <gasps> Joe Montana. Mm-hmm. Peter Dinklage. Hey. We love him. We love him. Hugh Laurie. House. Yes, we love him. We love House. I mean, he's done so many other, he's a comedy legend. But he is House. But he is. He's Dr. Mr. House. Mr. House. He's Mr. House. <laughs> Dr. House, more like Mr. House. I mean, House he would have lost, you. he should have lost his doctor title at some point. He was crazy. He was crazy. Joshua Jackson. Hey. Jimmy O. Yang. Oh, I love him. Friend of our friend Molly's. <gasps> I've been to his, been to his house. Oh my God. A, when we lived in LA. Um, okay. Happy birthday to all of those June 11th babies. Was there like one woman on that list? There are a lot. Once again. It's weird. It's Yeah, you're kind of trying to find. It's the, all TikTok stars. Oh, okay. And I'm, I don't know what to do so, with that. So sorry to our listeners who love TikTok. We, we are love not. T- I mean, I love 
the elements of TikTok. I just wasn't aware of. I love when people. I get a reel on Instagram that was a TikTok. Yeah. That was a viral TikTok months ago. And I'm like, have you guys seen this reel? And everyone's like, yes, it's five years old. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, we're getting old. We're getting old. But you know what that means? We're getting m- to become more of ourselves. Oh. So that's nice. I love that. Thank you. Well. Okay. Now, Hayley. Mm-hmm. What do you think the number one song from Fuck. June 11th, 2013 is? Here are your So we've options. had a, and so this is, we've had a big, we've had a break now since season three finale. Okay. Yeah. Oof. Is it? <laughs> Harlem Shake by Bauer. It can't be. It's been here forever. Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke. Oh God. Featuring T.I. and Pharrell. Oh God. Or Can't Hold Us, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis featuring Ray Dalton. That is a really good running and planking song. <laughs> That's a really good running. And that is the main difference between us. <laughs> You'll, You'll never find me like, running. Na, 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 you never find me running nice. nor planking. We are swim fans. We are swim fans. But I would never do those treacherous activities. The city can hold us. The city? Yeah. Like I thought it was the, the ceiling. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Which one is it? It's got to be the ceiling. <laughs> I think I thought it was the city. But maybe which it is the city. No. Like the city can't hold us. Maybe that makes no because sense. Because we're so big, because the egos are so big that they 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 can't even take up the municipality of it's one city. It's absolutely the ceiling right? can't it hold could... us. But why are they on the ceiling? How are you on the ceiling? Oh, you're like breaking, you're Spider-Man. like raise the roof. Regardless. I like it, that you're the smart one that knew it was ceiling and now I have to explain that to you even though I thought it was city. I yes and so hard that <laughs> you say anything to different to what I believe and I'm like, sure, okay, let's go there. The city like can't the city hold, us. hold us. Anyway, I do think it's blurred lines. You <laughs> think it's blurred yeah. lines? Unfortunately, but it's got to be. You're incorrect. Fuck. It was can't hold us. It was like the ceiling slash city. Can't hold us. It's extra soul destroying when you pick the song you don't like. Over the one you do. And you've spent 10 minutes talking about the one you do like. Planking and running to. Plunking. Plunking. And it, it hurts my it hurts my soul. Like it's like when we're doing improv and if you make a joke that you don't find funny, but you think the audience will like. And then they don't like it. You wanna it's not good. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Don't sell yourself out. Anyway, so can't hold us, Mac. Can't hold us. Wow. Like the ceiling get older. Okay, it's time to hear from the twelve-year-olds who, of Yay. course, write the Wikipedia episode description. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> the contents of the truck of Wilden's squad car is revealed to be a dead pig. The girls flee the scene with Mona removing the disc, showing footage of Ashley running over Wilden. In an attempt to earn some of their trust, Mona reveals a bunch of secrets to the PLLs. Never been referred to as the PLL. No. Interesting. Okay. The next morning, the girls find Wilden's body laying in the street by the church, surrounded by coroners. Rip. Rip. It is revealed that Wilden was one of the two people who wore the Queen of Hearts costume on the Halloween train. Mona says the other was <gasps> Melissa. <gasps> but the computer is hacked and white before she can prove it. Mona is now A's target, along with the rest of the liars. Jessica De Laurentiis returns to Rosewood, but her intentions are unclear. Toby receives a text from A asking for the A van in exchange for information about his mother's death based on a tip from A. At Wilden's funeral, the PLLs meet Detective Gabriel Holbrook. Oh, mm. Holbrook. Mm. Now I'm remembering who he is. Mm. Who is investigating the murders of the... D- <laughs> I don't know if anyone else can hear this, but I feel like my mouth is so wet today. Only just then was it very like... Mine must be dry as fuck. Wet pussy, wet mouth. I think I learned a thing from like, just like. <laughs> like get it. I, I haven't been, I gotta keep going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. The PLLs meet Detective Gabriel Holbrook, who is investigating the murders of Detective Wilden and Garrett Reynolds. A mysterious woman dressed in a black veil appears at Wilden's funeral. And there is an A ending. The Black Widow is in the A lair. She adds a Mona doll to the collection. As she lifts off her veil, we see that she's wearing a burnt Allison mask, revealing that she is red coat with a new costume. And scene. They love the dolls. And we love our dolls. And we love our dolls. <laughs> and we are merely a doll in the Black Widow's 
world. universe. Madam Web, if you will. <laughs> All I know about Madam Web is I saw I, I saw a TikTok this morning of a man being like this film. How dare you? This is the worst film I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Oh no! Fuck you, Mark. He he went off, and it was very. It was sad. Poor Marvel, they're flop. They right are now. flop. They're flop as flop. You know how they could pick it up? Acquire the rights to PLL, make it make a PLL multiverse. Oh, please. I mean, Ravenswood, the perfectionist. It already exists, yeah. Give it to her. And also, the I can not for the life of me remember the name of the new show that's actually good. I keep forgetting it. Like the original Bailey Matters? Original. Original. Oh, well, that, yeah. Well, it's weird because I think it's going to be Pretty Little Liars Summer, summer school. school. I nearly said summer camp. Summer school. So yeah, I because yes, yes. Original sin is the na- the words I keep forgetting. Yeah, which now forget them. Forget about. I fucking can't wait for that to come back. Jesus, that was so good. Yeah, Keen. All right. The so boot this, opens. So so this was written and directed by I Marlene King. Wow. No and wonder. That, and that makes sense because it feels it feels very pilot vibes mm-hmm. and all the other kind of big episodes that echo the pilot. I love a P- I will get there at the end, but I'm like, I love a PLL funeral. There's nothing better than a Rosewood funeral. It's so Andrew Cunanan. It is Andrew Cunanan. <laughs> Canon. Just in case anyone's joining us for this episode now. Look, I don't know. To the to anyone that randomly joins at this point in the show, tell us why. And we're sorry. And we're sorry. For all the the lore. The lore. Toburki, Andrew Cunanan, Prum, Shum. There's a lot. You, there's a lot. There's a lot that we can't keep up with. Okay. Um, yeah, so we pick up in the final moments of the season three finale oh. where the girls and Mona, obviously Mona, we had a discussion with Ali. Yep. Um, Queen. She and last season, well, like last time, um, <laughs> I guess because these we're not taking a break in between releases. Um, because we love. Because we love you. And this. And we just we just love this so much. Um, but, yeah, we kind of talked about, like, is Mona a liar or not, right? Yes. Um, anyway, I will say, like, the girls are the girls and it's the girls and Mona to me. In my notes, Mona is not one of the – in my notes, Mona is not one of the girls. She's a plus one. She's a plus one. So the girls and Mona, they're standing at the trunk of Wilden's car. They open the boot, the trunk. Ash, what's in there? Dead pig. This was disgusting. It's dead pig. I remember this. This is feral. I hate this. It made me sad for the pig. I made me sad for the pig. And I remember. Sad for the pig. And we said this in the last episode as well. Um, the Ali brought up that the girls didn't know, because I think it was like they didn't know if they were going to renew for another season, which the proof is in the pudding. Of course, it's going to be renewed for more seasons. Got um, That the girls didn't know what they were reacting to. So they all have different reactions. And then when you cut back to oh. them seeing the pig, they're kind of, it makes more sense. Anyway, there's I a forgot, dead pig. I forgot that. And I now I wish I looked at their faces more. Yeah. I'll have to rewatch it. I. Also didn't think about yeah, it until right now. That's I think it's because we're in that same room <laughs> that we were with Ali. Yes. All the memories are coming all the, back. All the memories. Um, and if you haven't watched the episode, watch that. It's great. Listen. We, we did, we did, we're both wearing hoods and we do a reveal. Ali was wearing a red coat. It's, it was great. Um, yes, the boot is open. There's a dead fucking pig, which is obviously funny because ACAB and pigs. Pigs. And pigs. Wildon's a cop. Wildon's a cop. We get it. His cop car, there's a pig. They're all like, yucky. And then you hear something playing from in the car. Yes. And it is the, once again, is this a, this random like loose laptop? Is it like a car that's connected, a, 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 a screen's connected to the car? I don't know. But it's playing a video of, so we've seen videos play on this before. Videos of like when we saw Ashley Marin hit Wildon with the car. Yep. Now it's a video that shows Shauna. And Jenna taking the body away, is that correct? Or is that something else that they've got in a different time? I've got Ashley hitting Wilden, but I don't remember. <laughs> Honestly, no, I think you're right. I think that's what it's just footage of that to be like, oh, they're gonna frame Ashley Marin. Let me check. I've got the oh no, I don't. Anyway. So I think that's matter. what it is. I think it's just it's just that footage. But also at some point previous to this, we've yes. we've seen footage yeah, of yeah, Shauna yeah. and Jenna There's being the ones of... that drag his body away from that crime scene. There's a lot of fucking footage. The NAT the club NAT working club. overtime. My God, their hard drives. They full. How many, how many terabytes do you think they got? I don't know. And I back, don't know what a terabyte is. Back in 2013, like a one terabyte hard drive was like seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Not today. where do they get? Who are they funded by? City of Pennsylvania? City of wait? City state of Pennsylvania? Like the city can't hold us. <laughs> Fuck. 
sorry. <laughs> they must be funded by the state government. Yes. I agree. I can't believe I said city of Pennsylvania. Flop. All hey, right. It's um, okay. It's, we live in a country that has five states and two territories. We don't have to remember that much. That, out. that was sick. Hey, you can't forget about ACT and NT. Sometimes I do forget about ACT. 9-11 never forget. 901 free at last about ACT. ACT. Australian Capital, capital territory, territory, if you wanted to know. Um, anyway, so they're <laughs> in the so they're all and they're all a bit stressed, I guess. Um, and Mona's deleting that video that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and Hannah's like, hurry up, hurry up. Oh my god. And I'm like, you're deeply unhelpful. Hannah, yeah. I guess they're stressed, but I'm like, Mona's helping your mum. And also Mona knows what she, like clearly she knows what she's doing. She yeah. is, I would say, second to Caleb in techno boy toydom. She's leave her. Techno girl will. <laughs> Techno girl world. I think there's something better, but no, that's every what single came time we see mouth. a girl on a phone or a computer now, it's techno, techno girl, girl world. Oh my god, I love this. Stupid. Um, yeah, anyway. so she she basically takes like the whole like physical hard drive of the computer out, mm, mm, yanks it out, mm. um, and then they're now, I believe, at Spencer's house. Yeah, and. Emily says something like, Ugh, I'm going to hit you or something. And then Mona says, you really were the weakest link, Em, but look how strong I made you. And this is Ugh. weird because I think personality-wise, yes, Emily, like whatever has been weird. Like, I don't know. I can't be bothered diving into that. But like that, yeah, she was like shy, I guess, and in the closet. I don't know. Like maybe. But she's literally the physically strongest one. Like she's she's an athlete. She's an athlete. Well, so if she's like, I'm going to hit you, you're like, you've always been the weakest and now you're strong. It's like, nah, bro, she would have beaten the shit out of you four years ago. And your height difference as well. Yeah. Just the the, scu- the that extra bone density. Mona's such like a scrappy little fighter. Like, you know what I mean? Like short, like when, Napoleon complex. When Christina Aguilera wrote Fighter, oh. she was singing it about Mona. Oh, my God. If there was like a music moment with Fighter. By Christina Aguilera, like Mona a fight scene. In a, in a boxing gym. I would sob. I, I think one of my favourite songs of all time, Fighter. Crazy. That's not crazy to me at all. In my top Fighter. 20. <laughs> and, you know, next play, Stronger by Britney Spears. Oh. Then, Lucky by Britney Spears. Then, Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. You know, wow. make this, make a loop of like, I'm strong and I'm beautiful. I did singing lessons when I was like 11 years old. Get it. Um, With... <laughs> With a man that worked at the Titanic restaurant in Williamstown, which is the small town I grew up. This is just for whoever. But there is, like, famously a restaurant in Melbourne in Williamstown. Which this is, is amazing. The, the Titanic restaurant. And the floor, like, moves and it, like, recreates the Titanic. It's Titanic themed. Is, is it a dinner theatre restaurant? Is that it's, just yeah, my imagination? I think it is. It's dinner theatre. And, and now there's Titanic, the musical. There was a submersible. We were ahead of the curve. We yeah. Anyway, and my music teacher was... Someone that worked there, and I, 11 years old, I was singing Beautiful by Christina Aguilera, and I think I was very bad. But just imagine it, 11 year old Haley going, like, You are beautiful in every single way, and just being shit. I bet you broke, I bet the ceiling couldn't hold you, actually. <laughs> the city couldn't hold me. The city, nor the ceiling. Um, That's also, amazing. There's a quick Dale, I think there's only one Dale note in all of this. King. Because um, there's, Really good continuity in this scene of like they're all muddy from and the fire, right? Like this is still from the lodge fire. Oh yeah, wow. That it's still from that. Um, and I don't know Dale just takes one look at Arya with mud on her face. It goes a real chimney sweep and then walks away. That's amazing. That's all a real offered. chimney. A real sweep. chimney. Sweep. And she did. And she did. Um, yeah. And then this is the I've written in all caps rapid fire answers montage. All right, I'm just gonna go through every single thing we find out. And I just want to, before you get into that, I want to say to lead into this, Spencer says, you like games, don't you, Mona? Let's play one called The Third Degree. And I was like, cunt. I love it's that. It's cunt. It's serving yeah. cunt. All right. Take All right. us through this edit. Mona put the car in Hannah's garage, not from the lake. She did not pull it from the lake, but she did put it in Hannah's garage. It's the last time she saw it, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Shauna knew Jenna before she came to Rosewood and Mona thinks that she's in love with Jenna. Mm-hmm. When Cece came to Radley... To visit Mona, mm. she thought that Cece was Allison. Lucas gave Emily that massage, and to quote Mona, he said you were tense. Lucas, shut the fuck up. Fuck off. Shum. 
Sh- oh, it's Shum. Oh, so it's Shum. Shum. Knowing that Lucas touched so her tense. at all. Mm. Disgusting. Mona says that she recruited Toberki when he got that job in Bucks County. Mm. Take us to Bucks County. You know. Let's do. If we can go to Ravenswood, take us to Bucks yeah, County. Yeah, <laughs> Mona didn't push Ian off the bell tower, but she says she wished she knew who did. Useless. But also, more mystery. <laughs> the girls fall asleep and come back to Mona being gone. They're like, oh, my God, no, she's gone. She's like, she's taking the hard drive. And, and they're like, did she drug us? I'm like, you fell asleep. And they were like, wouldn't be the first time. Yeah, true. You know what? True. They do say that. And then she comes in. She's like, got your coffees. And she's got all the crazy coffee orders. Of course, I do. Ours is huge. Yeah, they're all a lot. I do love yeah. this. Spencer's is the biggest, though. That blew my mind. Spencer's is bigger than Aria's. When Andrew Kunan, hey, she needs a lot of caffeine. I, mean, I would yeah, take her true. as like a short black though, yeah, or like an Americano or whatever. Um, yeah. I do love how Mona like knows all their coffee orders and has Emily's key. Like, there's a bit so funny. It's such a. There's nothing more fun than like, in quotation, a reformed villain or a villain that joins the good side. That's like, also, I know everything about you. It's cheeky. Like, it's, it's one of my favorite tropes. Me too. It's great. Her being like. I hope it's okay, Emily. I borrowed your car. Emily looks to her keys and she's like, I have my own set. <sighs> of course she does. Janelle Parrish is so good. It also like gives us answers to things. We're always like, how does she get around? How does she get everything? I mean, I do still have questions. How did she pay to make a replacement of the keys? Obviously. And go to school. And go to school. I don't know if anyone here's ever had to replace car keys, but it's hundreds of dollars for one set. Again, they've got state funding. They must. You think A has state funding? The A in state stands for A. Yeah. A is alive and A stands for state in brackets funding. Yeah. Title of that maybe. You've done it. Who knows? Um, There's so much more to go. Um, <laughs> we find out uh, that Mona's going to take the girls to the lair. Let's go to the lair, lair. Let's go to the lair. I love Mona goes like, Mikasa es su casa. And then Hannah goes, in English, please. I'm like, this is it's famously. It's like, famously about houses. Yeah, it's famously my house is your house. My house is your house, your house is my house, from the creepy RV back to Spencer's house. I know what the fuck that was, <laughs> but I loved it. Who, who could, I think it's, it's called my, my, my Land is Your Land. Oh, beautiful. It's like a, yeah, I'm pretty sure it has bad, bad roots. All right. Similar to It's a Small World vibes, I think. Crazy, man. Oh, oh. We need to address Jippy Tummy. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, my God. Yes. And this will be, yeah, Jippy Tummy bad. Um, we now know. We and now know. that's on me because I think I was the one that's like, I looked up what it meant and I think had I scrolled literally three centimetres more, I would have seen, like, the origin of it. It's it's racist and it's bad. It's racist and we're, shit. We would like to formally apologise for thinking it's hilarious. We would like to blame Ren. We would like to, we no, would we like do to blame apologize. Ren. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Our, yeah, and it was just great because we posted it and then a few listeners were like, I reckon it might be bad. And uh, at the same time. But everyone time, was very nice. No one was like, fuck you. It was just kind of like, oh, I don't know if it's like it's British, good. it's probably bad. It was the same day that I was watching the season three finale. My friend Georgia came over and she was watching it with mm, me. Mm. And she was like, well, Jiffy, tell me. She's like, I'm pretty sure that's racist. And then I forgot about, forgot to tell you. And then I messaged you the same day that someone messaged our account saying that. And we were like, Ooh! So we apologise for like the several episodes before this that um, we've said that probably. And thought it was hilarious. Yeah. We still think Ren is a silly duffer, but. It was silly. It also adds a, a racist element to his character. But we do apologise we do. for anyone we have offended. If, if you're if, listening. And when. Apologize. If and yeah, when. If and when. We do apologise. No doubt we'll probably do something. Well, if we're going off what Ren's saying. Why are we trusting Ren? I just realised we haven't gotten to the intro. <laughs> we've literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we've, we've been, okay. We'll go fast. Uh. All right. Yep. So they're going to the lair. They're all in the same car, I think. And yes. then um, they're kind of stopped in the town square, probably. The clown square, if you will. Just the um, flop in the town square. And the jester has flopped because they w- go past Wilden's car and they're like, okay, it's still there. Wait, there's police tape everywhere. There's a dead body in the street. The cover over the dead body blows away and it's Wilden. It's another dead pig. The Wilden. Dead, dead dead pigs galore in Rosewood, okay? May Wilden not may, may, may he not rest though. Yeah, I think it was. He's such a good villain, as I've said. Like yes. he's awful, but and I was kind of when he de- when he was dead, I'm like, oh good. And then I'm like, oh, what an era. But I think it is time to move on from Wilden. Yeah. He was such a fucking creep. Bye. 
See ya. Bye, girl. Um, then we are back at Megan the Lodge. And Toberki take lighter from Lodge Burn Crime Scene. Mine is Toberki Lurkin Woods. <laughs> Toberki Lurkin. Toberki Lurkin. That's title. That's like, title. That's of Vip, title what are we talking Vip. about? Toberki Lurkin. I can't believe I wrote Toberki Lurkin Woods and not Toberki Lurkin in Woods. And that's why together it's synergy. Well, that's why we're such a good team. That's pretty cool. He's watching a firefighter sift through the rubble of the lodge and mm-hmm. the firefighter picks up a red coat. Oh, yeah! And then just like drops it back into the heat. So he's like, um... Okay. I'm going to come back for that. I'm going to come back for that red card. Mm-mm. Then we find out that. Oh, okay. Then we find out back to the girls that Mona was on the Halloween train and she was wearing one of the Allison masks. The and girls this is in A's lair. Are in the lair and they see the mask. So they're like, oh, and Hannah's like, oh my God, you were on the. Halloween train. She's like, I think we almost shared our first kiss. I quoted that. I love that. Love that. Love also, that. I would have. I would like to see it. I would like to see it too. If everyone's happy. Absolutely. And mm. then um, we see a video. She shows the girls a video of Wilden as the Queen of Hearts. And they're like, oh my God. And then there's, there's another Queen of Hearts that comes along. So these two people, Wilden and someone else, were the people that put Arya in the goddamn box. And they're like, who is it? And she's like, it's your sister, Spencer. It's Melissa. Yeah, she's like, I'll prove it. Then. Hackers are hacking. All the files start getting deleted, which I love. Like there's, it's and I hate it because it's annoying. But and, and I feel like it's not realistic. It's not realistic at all. Works. And A's timing impeccable always. A, comedic timing, computer deleting timing, murder timing. Timing is everything, and A is, is the master. Everywhere. Yeah, everything, ever, all at once, timing wise. Absolutely. But yeah, it's always a bit of a gag when it's like, oh my God, like they're deleting it as we go. I'm like, oh, gag. Love and of it. course it makes the girls be like, yeah, sure, Aina. We, Aina. Aina. Mona. Aina. Who All knows? right. <laughs> New character. Twin. Twin theory. Aina. Twin theory. Aina is A. Aina. <laughs> then, so someone's deleting all the files and they're like, how convenient for Mona, I guess. Because it is like Mona now can't prove. Um, yep. And then... They hear voices. Then they hear voices. The voices in their heads. Just kidding. <laughs> It's little girls. They go outside. They're in a caravan. Yes. So the RV is a mobile home, an RV, a caravan, and it's at like a caravan home, you know, Mm. like a lot for caravans. Trailer park, another word to describe it. True. Um, And they hear a bunch of little girls laughing and playing. And then. On like a merry. What do you. Is that not a merry go round? What do you call like those round. Carousel? Yeah. Seesaw, but no, it's not a seesaw. It's like a carousel, but without the horse. Like it's just it's just a spinny, like a lazy Susan, but big. <laughs> a lazy Susan for kids. <laughs> a lazy Susan for kids that you can like be on. That's so funny. A lazy Susan for kids. <laughs> I don't know. That's exactly what it is. It is. It's a lazy Susan for kids. I want a lazy Susan really bad. I want a lazy Susan for adults, but not for food. No, one that we can like play on. I have a lazy Susan for like. My salts. Skin, oh, and salts. Yeah. Skincare. People have them for like like little like skincare organizers. Like like spice racks, essentially, but for skincare. We are past our prime. Now Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so they see this lazy Susan for kids in a playground. <laughs> um Merry Go Around kind of thing. I don't know. Um The girls are on it and they all creepily look like little versions of each there's girl. There's five little girls. I see like there's no Allison lookalike. No, but there's a Mona lookalike. Yes. And so Mona's like little fucking nerd. They're, Aria, yes, they're dressed as insane. They look they're 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 little like twelve year old to maybe ten year old girls yeah. that are meant to be the girls in two thousand like eight? when yes, because there's like um Aria with the pink stripe. Yeah, it's, so like, it's, it's like that. The period when Alison disappeared. Yeah. And then they all are like, we're playing with our dolls. We have dolls. They have dolls that look the same as them from that period of time. There's like Loser Mona Mm-mm. version, Pink Stripe, um, Aria. The Hannah one has like a little like pillow in her toy stomach. God. Jesus Christ. And they're like, Emily's one I think looked boring. I think it was like unidentifiable. Or she was she in swim stuff? Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. We can honestly. But sorry, the little just... Aria one was so funny. <laughs> yes. And then um, they say that Mona's friend Allison gave, the, they're like, where'd you get those dolls? And she's like, oh, the little girl's like, little girl. Little girl. Your friend Allison gave them to us right after you moved in here to Mona. Sorry? So, what? Okay. 
Pardonnez-moi. Pardonnez-moi. Next, <laughs> Hannah is pretending to be Mona's friend to get the chip from the laptop. They're saying the chip. It's such a huge chunk of like hard drive. It's not a chip at all. No. It's the whole damn hard drive. Then Spoberky in Burnside. Mm. And someone else is there that runs away. All well, if it's not it's not a, a PLL scene. No. Like an investigation scene, especially if they're like doing something, then they hear a noise and then they look and it's like and then they A runs away. I swear that was the Pokemon like a wild pigeon. Can you tell? Can you tell the way nineties kids? We're nineties kids. Sorry. Wait. Who's your favorite Pokemon? I thought you were gonna like go like wait and then fart. Um I would. My Pekka my favorite Pokemon is Raichu. I've always loved Raichu in the episode <laughs> where like <laughs> Raichu's going up against Pikachu and they're like, Ash, you have to evolve Pikachu. I was like, I'm rooting for Raichu. He's like, a smart he's move. like chubby and he has like a little, sur- he like surfs on his own tail. I just think he's so cute. He's a surfer, bro. He's a surfer, bro. I just think Raichu is like the shit. My favorite Squirtle, also a surfer, bro, but he surfs on his shell. Squirtle with Sunnies is like my favorite thing in the world. Oh yeah, I love my nephew loves Squirtle, and he walked around the house the other day just going Squirtle, Squirtle. Oh, so that's so cute. It's important. It's important culture, but it's not PLL. So we must get back to the girls. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it, when I look at the notes, <laughs> my next note. Fun. 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 Jessica Dillarentis alert. She's back. Oh, she's back, baby. She's <laughs> back, and she is cunty as hell. Girl. She's such, I love her. She's so, she's so soap actress, like perfection for the show. I think there's a world where if this was a Ryan Murphy show, she would be played by Jessica Lange. Yeah. Like in an age, you know, if the age could all work out, but like, she's just incredible. She is. And deeply subtle, like unnerving. She's subtle, but also she's not. No. She's great. She's really mm. like, and she's back, she's back with a vengeance. Yes, as she should be. Um. Then yeah. Emily... She's like, can you help me move some of this these boxes? And she's moving stuff back into Allison's old room, which is like, she describes it later as like a shrine. A shrine. Allison. It's pretty much the same. I think we see the iconic twin poster, maybe. Oh, there was like, yes, there were posters up, and I did not look. This was the but beginning. I did see them. This season was the beginning of the twin theory for sure. <gasps> People weren't watching in time. There's so many theories about like all these allusions to twins. You gotta have a twin theory. And I mean, it is it is basically a soap opera, so there's got to be twins. There's also this crazy moment where um, when Emily's like says something about Allison and Jessica's like, oh, well, thank you for saying her name, which is yeah, true. She's true. like, everyone doesn't say it around me, which is like sucks. And then she's like, because they're weak. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, well, well, I mean, calm down, Jess. I think they just like don't know what to do. Ah. Then, um, uh, I've got Hannah goes with Mona to yes. put the RV in this garage in the middle of nowhere, and she sees that she has the keys for it, and she's like, mm, 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 mm. Then we have a flop scene at the brew. Where, Before oh, that, I just oh, want to say, in please. that scene, Hannah's wearing the iconic red shiny American apparel pants. Oh, my God. She looked like Christmas tinsel. She looked like Christmas Christmas tinsel. Christmas tinsel. And I Mary was Chrysler. He- Mary Chrysler. I was here for it. I was here for it too. But it was, I didn't, for, I'm surprised I didn't write it down, but I was like, oh, wow. They feel Christmassy. They feel <laughs> festive. Festive. Oh, the looks we're getting. In Looks. this episode, it's a lot. I don't think I wrote any of them down because they're just there's so many, and there's I was so like, many, I don't know. Know. next, yeah, Ezra flop, get the fuck out of the brew. Arya's like the it's like so late at night, and I think it's like dark. Arya, it's empty at the brew. Arya's reading or some shit. I don't know. It's empty. Go Ezra, home. who walks in? Ezra flop fits. He orders a cappuccino. It's the middle of the damn night. I can't have a coffee after two p.m. Otherwise, I struggle to sleep. I can. I have, but you know, like Haley has a normal functioning brain. Mine requires stimulation to be <laughs> calm. So I can have a coffee pretty much anytime. That's sick. But I'll usually do it instead of having my medication. Is that smart? Probably not. Anyway, I can't comment. <laughs> I can't, you can't comment because you're not. Your body, your choice. <laughs> Thank you. I've been trying to get, I've been trying to get people to really understand that it is my choice. How it many is. coffees I have in one day. So I'll have 10 coffees at all. Ezra's in the same position. He's smashing caps and he, 
tells he tells Arya he's offered a permanent position at Rosewood High. Why? <sighs> Why? And then she's he's like, you know, maybe we should st- see other people. Maybe you should you should see other people. And she's like, I'm not ready to do that. Also, like that, not to like harp on it, but it was so weird when he said that to her, just because I'm like, six, she's 16 or whatever. Yeah. 16 year olds, I swear to God, don't talk like that. Like it's a, it's a very adult thing to say of like, you can see other people. And I'm like, yeah, true. And then I'm like, she's a child, like she's a teenager. No. Yeah. She's dating and having boyfriends and girlfriends. Like you just have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Yeah. Or you're like, yeah. Just <sighs> the difference between them. I hate it. I hate it. And he also like says like, I've got a family now. Oh. So you're mature enough to have a family now, but you're not mature enough to not be a fucking pedophile. Yeah. Interesting, cunt. Then we find out that Wilden was shot multiple times and the place that he was killed, like the location in the town, the municipality, <laughs> um, that he was killed is a different location to where his body was found. So he was killed somewhere, taken mm. somewhere else and, yeah, shot there, so that I think that's making the girls think. Okay, maybe he died fr- via Ashley Marin car hit, then was dragged away by Shauna and Jenna, and then someone shot him multiple times. Mm. Interesting. And it was at the same time the girls were at the lodge, so there's they're like, and Toberki was there too. So it's like they can't give an alibi no. because they all were at another crime scene, crime scene scene of the crime for for getting Sarah Marshall reference. Then. <laughs> Toberki is trying to get Spencer to eat. Why is he not talking about case? Hmm? Toberki? Hmm? All he wants to talk about is eat. And I mean, it is Diet House. It is Diet House and he gets a text message from A. So he's being, yeah, he's being kind of sus. He keeps it from Spencer and um, he wants to know how his mother really died and he has to like deliver the lair to A. Yeah, he gets a text from A saying, "Bet you miss her every day." Kisses A. That was fucked. Which is fucked with a selfie from his mum, which I'm pretty sure died before selfies were a thing. The timelines yeah. of all of her death and everything are so the continuity is it's a big continuity goof of what they've done. We'll That's get to good because I am finding it like, oh yeah, I I care about this now, and I do care about it. Well. But it can't, I'm just like, oh, okay, yes, we'll this. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it at yeah. some point. I think it's either this episode or the next one and I will explain the incontinuity issues. Um, then Hannah is in her wig era because I think from this point forward, Ashley Benson dyed her hair and she wasn't supposed to. She dyed her hair brown and then for the rest of this season she's wearing wigs. So oh keep an God. eye out if you're watching along as you're listening. Does she's her got, hair look better or worse? Well, in this scene, absolutely horrible. She's got a headband on but it's not over her hair. It's clearly just covering up her hairline Yeah, where the wig meets her head. Oh, I remember the headband. And on one side of her head it's like covering her ear and then the other side it's like covering in like behind her. It looks so oh, bad. Oh, I wish I knew that. I love wig watch. Wig watch. I wish I'd known that. Yeah. I'll not going forward I know now. My next note is Hannah and Mona going to the mall. They're Let's going go to, the, to mall, the mall, which is absolutely. Mall. Let's go Let's to, to the, the mall. mall. Dun, 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 dun. Um, also, a random guy like comes up to Mona and she waves him away in French. She's like, because <laughs> I saw it was like on the captions and I had to look it up on the wiki and it just literally says like she waves him away and says something in French. Someone's going to do it. So we wait. So we wait. And then oh. <laughs> Aria is called into Principal Hack's office. Vice and also, principal, like, right before this scene, like, the Hannah Mona scene, it's not worth commenting on, but Emily and Aria, uh, which I think, and I, uh, the most boring dynamic, or, like, a dynamic I'm not used to saying, like, Emily and Aria. Yeah. But it was a, it was a good scene. I, like, they got a good dynamic, but I was like, oh, it's the least favourite dynamic, I would say. Yeah. Which doesn't mean it's bad. It just it's just they've got the least chemistry. I would say. Yeah, Um, because I think they're the two more like they're on the they're normal like on the spectrum of like big characters. Spencer and Hannah are on like opposite ends. Yes, I mean if the spectrum is you know fun to Borzo, fun to Borzo, they're on the Borzo level. Sorry, Mm. it's just the truth, Charlie Puth. I kind of, but and also that they're just like not extreme characters. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, 
I've so Why many am more I so, notes. Yeah, anyway, so, so I was just going to say, um, so they're sitting in the courtyard. We need a, we need a I bathroom. can't not talk about dynamics. They're sitting yeah. in the courtyard and um, Ezra is over in the corner, like wowing students yeah. and Hackett is watching Aria. So they're kind of like, oh my God, feeling sus. Like yes. Hackett's onto them. That's just some context that took eight minutes. And then Aria's call to vice principal Hack's office. And we have this scene that if you're watching for the first time, is all I ever wanted. And when it was happening, I was like, oh my God, this is too good to be true. What's happening? What's happening? Basically she walks in and he, for all intents and purposes, I will paraphrase here, is yeah. like, I know you sucked and fucked Ezra Fitz. Here are professional sepia toned images of you two mid coit, mid coitus. In this state, it is a felony for a teacher to have sex with a minor. Ezra Fitz is going to prison, which is all we've wanted. Oh. When Isn't he says, incredible? in this state, it's a felony for a teacher to have sex with a minor. Ezra Fitz is going, going to, to prison. prison. I prummed. I prummed. Except I cum. didn't because. It's a hallucination. It's all Also, you know it's a hallucination because from this child's perspective, she thinks she's going to get in trouble for this. You're yes. not going to get in trouble for this. No, And also, of course, the giveaway that it's not real is who the fuck has taken those pictures? Yeah. <laughs> not me. Not me. Another pedophile, allegedly, probably. Um, oh, and then like Ezra's arrested in front of everyone. Oh, it's all we want. It sucks so much that it's a dream. I reckon it was that they heard so many people watching the show being like, uh, they never going to address that he's a pedophile. It's illegal what he's doing. Do you think that's what was happening at the time? I think maybe. I think maybe because maybe that was a big part of why they didn't know if the last season was going to keep going or not. I don't know. We'll have to find that. We, I can, actually, we can do some investigation. And I don't mean this in a bait way. Like, I actually do want to find that out. Do a um, very like interactive Patreon episode about like a deep dive into that and what our yes. listeners thought at the time. Yeah. So I'm let's do that. Just gonna quickly. And we can down. do that, and we will do that. And then we find out the real reason that she's that Arya's called in is just because Ella has some paperwork that Arya's picking up for her. Ugh, silly. <laughs> then Arya texts Ezra from that hallucination. <laughs> she texts him, being like, "You know what?" I do actually want to see other people. So we stan, we stanly splice her, not fucking. We do. We don't him. like that it's driven by her trying to protect him, but no. hey, we take what we can get. We do. Then um, we see that Paige, we find out that Paige got into oh, yeah. Stanford and wants Emily to go with her. But of course, Emily wants to go to Danby. This might be the first time we hear about Danby. I can't remember, but it's Danby mm. season. We've talked about Dan, like, I think Danby's, because yeah. oh, right. I wouldn't What's her name? That girl that came from Danby, that's already happened, isn't it? Sam- 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 Samara? Sam- yes. Huh? Yeah, Danby, because def- otherwise I wouldn't remember Danby. And we love Danby. 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 I would go to Danby. Danby. Would you go to Danby? I, I mean, it depends. If it's, like, not as good as other schools, probably yes. <laughs> we're going but to I guess Danby. it's, like, kind of good. Getting girl, we're going to Danby. Get then, in the car, we're going to Danby. In this scene, also, Shay Shay Mitchell's clavicle is doing things to me. Okay, she looks incredible. She's wearing like a off the shoulder. Such. Oh, she's a gorgy girl. And this scene's really cute because Paige is like, we can like share a room and like that. She's just painting such a nice road trips and and then and she says she wants to go. Yes, she says she wants to go with her. And then they're like, oh my god. (laughs) And then Paige is. I have the same note. Paige says. I love you too, but it's the most strange. She's oh. like, I just couldn't believe their relationship less. Sorry. I, yes, I agree. I think it's because Emily can be like just kind of a vacant <laughs> vessel. Void. void sometimes. Yeah. Gorgy, gorgy void. Um, but there's a bit where like Paige is trying to convince her and she's like, you don't have to be like afraid of the dark anymore. Like, and I'm like, bro, you tried to murder her. 911, 901 free at last. Never forget when she held her head under yeah. the goddamn water in the pool. You are part of the reason she is not safe in this town. So what? Uh, I'm, I'm still, still a rock star. star. <laughs> then <laughs> Hannah is now in beret wig mode. They're at, we're at we're at the uh, Marin girls' kitchen, of course, and she's now wearing a beret instead of the headband with her wig. And Mona can basically read through Hannah's bullshit right away. She's like, look, I know you're not really friends with me. You're just... You want the chip? You want the chip? You want and the And she's hot like, chip? here it is. She gives her the, 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 the hard drive because it's not a chip. It's a huge fucking hard drive. And she says to her, I really loved you once and I really was your friend. Oh, Mona sad. Mona sad. Mona sad. 
then I'm toxic because I want them to be like, I do want them to be course, friends. Like even I'm pulled in by like Mona's toxicity. She's good. <sighs> She's good. She speaks French. She's good. Then Jenna watches as Paige leaves the house from Emily's house. She's perching. She's per- Jenna's perching. Jenna's perching as she should be. She's back in her element perch time. Emily says a very funny line. She says, did you slither on down here to ask me about my love life or love something? That. But slither was said. Slither was said. And I really appreciated that. I did too. And then Jenna is like, you probably didn't know that Darren was a friend of mine, Darren Flop Wilden. And she says, basically, she's just basically there to tell, tell Emily, like, if anything happens to me, can you tell, give Toby a message to tell him that she never meant to hurt him? How fucking old is Wilden's? I didn't need to swear then. How old is <laughs> Wilden? <laughs> I just feel like I swear. Like, like why are they fr- I know, I know why they're friends, but like in the well, real it, world, it, why are they friends? Isn't he like the same age as Jason? It, yeah. All of the like, all of the the guy, all of the guys and gals in Rosewood that aren't in high school but aren't parents. I feel like they're all like twenty three to twenty five. I think. Yeah. Okay. Because in my head they're like twenty two to twenty three, which makes no. I'm like, being a cop and like Ren being a doctor and stuff. I don't know. I don't know about that. Jenna has a big old burn on her hand, and Hannah, sorry, Emily is like, what's that about? Ma'am, you've been at, she doesn't say this, but she's like, you've been at the lodge? Hmm? What is that? What's, what is that? And then on? she's like, tell to, she says to Emily, tell Toberki that I never meant to hurt him. And she does say Toberki. Toberki, she does. <laughs> then Spencer is in her room and she goes to look at her window and sees Mrs. Dilarentis standing in Allison's bedroom, just staring at her. Fun. Terrifying. Very in the, in the pilot. That happens with Ali, I think. Yeah, she looks out. Yes, okay, she, she's, she thinks she sees Allison. And that's why it's an I, Marlene King episode. Because it's all self-referential. It's beautiful. I then, love it. Um, Spenny gets a file on her iPad. Okay, new iPad baby alert. Interesting. Also means that A is an iPad baby. Yeah, oh, so many. A's absolutely an iPad baby. There's so many. Oh, epi- and oh, then it's epidemic. a... Epidemic. <laughs> it is an epidemic. An, an iPademic. Uh, iPad-demic. iPad-demic. Wow. Wow. End of episode. Thank you, everyone, for Thank listening. Thank you. Um, no, yes, uh, she gets this image sent, this file, and it has, like, a scan of a picture of Wilden's obituary mm. and a note written underneath it that says, Closed Those caskets keep secrets. secrets. His, His is, is open, open and it exposes, exposes yours. Kisses. Kisses. A. a. My phone recorrected his is to hibiscus. Y- y- beautiful. I so, said yum, but beautiful. <laughs> yum. yum. It is yum. Um so the girls basically surmise from that note that something is in Wilden's casket that the girls need to get to clear their names. Which is gnarly. It is gnarly. It's pretty gnarly. It's hang ten, it's gnarly. It's hang ten, bro. Just like tubular. Raichu. Oh, and Squirtle. Raichu. Finally, we're at Wilden's funeral. I Woo! love a funeral, as I said before. The press are out. The girls rock up in their hot black party dresses. The press are out. The press are out. The yeah. paps are here. The girls are hot at the funeral. There's like a newsreader with crazy hair. <laughs> like, it's all. There's this hot chick in a veil that they're like, who is she? Who is she? She's wearing an all black veil. They're like, okay, I thought we were the hot girls at the funeral. Ooh. It's a lot of hot people at this funeral. Interesting. Then the girls decide to split off and sep- like go on the- to look in different rooms. I'm like, stop. Stop. But here we get context. You know how, I don't know if we, I definitely complain, but I feel like sometimes we complain about like when they get an SOS text. Yes. And like, what is the context? Yes. Spencer does go, if you find it, send out an SOS. And I'm like, context. Context. Is this, that's all I needed to know. It was like, we're all doing something. Send me an SOS when you go. Yes. Out. Love it. Now Very we know. The context. Then Spencer finds the casket. I wrote Spencer and her modest peplum finds the casket because she is in a nice, a beautiful black peplum. The the time for peplums. The time of peplums. I like peplums are so f- like perfect for some body types. Mm-hmm. Like I really like a peplum. You had a peplum era. I did. And I, I just. 2014, I 2015. Forward, that was your peplum era. I look forward to peplums coming back. Bring them back. Sorry. Don't I be. love them. I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm here for you. I stand with you. So in Spencer this and thank you, Spencer and Peplum, pretty little Peplums. They're at the Speplum. casket. Speplum are at the casket. Mona shows up. She's like, we must have got the same message. Ooh, same A message. Yes. And they open the casket. There's a phone ringing. 
in dead Wilden's embalmed body in his pocket. So they're like, oh, dead guy. And the, the phone's ringing. The per- they go to pick it up, but they miss it. And they look at who called. The last two calls are from a blocked number. And then there's a third call in the history from a number Kisses. that's named Kisses. Kisses. Then they're like, oh, my God, should we call it? Like it must be A or Red Coat or something. They call, they call Kisses. It. Spencer's like, Hannah? Yeah, when the voice Hannah goes, answers. And then why are you calling me from my mum's, on my mum's phone? <gasps> so this is Ashley Marin's phone that A has planted on Wilden's dead body. So this is basically A threatening to frame Ashley Marin. And if the girls hadn't found the phone, they probably would have accused her. Um, and then Mrs. D appears <laughs> at the funeral. Well, I mean, she's at her daughter's funeral. It makes sense. I'm sorry. At Wildens. Wildens. What am I talking about? Um, and she says, Ali would be so proud of you, Hannah. You've really kept off the weight. I wrote, what a demon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What a demon. It I runs d- in the family. You it know? really does. Jesus. Jenna gets escorted in by some very attractive man. I wrote, who is Jenna's hunk? <laughs> who is he? Who is this hunk? An I am hunk? so glad that Jenna constantly has like the hottest man on her arm because yeah. she's so hot. Yeah. And she's got her glasses <laughs> back on. She's, She's undercover on. because only the girls know that she can see. I mean, she is once again going blind. So yeah, I kind of can't keep up girl? with all that. Um, then Toberki gets a text. I've got Toberki drive to New Lair. He because or he, he's, he's yes. transporting the lair. Sorry. He's transporting the lair. He's stolen it from the trailer park or from the hidden place where they hid it. And the text says, "I know what happened to your mum. Bring the lair, and you'll know too." But with a number two, because A is hip. Um, and to- I wrote Toberki tsk tsk. He is sad while he's driving. Also, we he's very mention. sad. He's he's acting. Toberki act well. He then we go to a flashback. Okay, now this is where the timeline thing. I have I have notes. Okay, so Ali and Toberki are in his room. And so it's pre her disappearance. Yep, probably and she that says summer. her famous line that she says to I think anyone she meets ever, which is I know and you, you want to kiss, kiss me. me. <laughs> and then he kind of like. He's he's like shy Toberki, pre confidence, pre glow up. Although I think I say pre cum, pre cum. I'm guessing they haven't kissed yet, so it probably is pre cum. Okay, I'm just guessing. Let him, let him. Um, and they're looking at his wall of snow globes, and she's showing him. And then his mum walks in, and she's like, "Toby, you're not at school." And she's like, "It's five p.m. or whatever." And she's like, "Oh, okay, uh, okay, I must have slept in." And she's like, "He's like, no, mum, I think something going, something's going on with you." She's like, oh, I'm okay, whatever. And she's clearly not well. Yeah. And then Ali's a cunt and is like, she's just woken up. What the fuck? Lazy much? She and then says, Toberki's like, you need to leave. She calls Toberki a loser. You're the loser, Allison. Truly. Like, she's so unnecessarily <laughs> mean. Yes, she is. And then basically, oh. okay, here is my, my continuity goof era. So earlier to this, at the end of last season, in one of the Eddie, sorry, Edos McLam moments, he said that he knew of a Toby Cavanaugh who was a, a young boy that would come and visit his mum, mm. right? We also know that Toby's mum died in Radley when he was little. It wasn't when he was older. This flashback shows him like the year that Allison disappeared. Yeah. And then, no spoilers, but later when we find out all of the details, without telling you what happened, we basically see a flashback of how what went down with his mum. You see, based off ages of people, Toberki must have been little. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't want to spoil this. But it, continuity, mess. I'm Alan King. You wrote this episode. You directed this episode. You must know that Toby could not have had this conversation with his. I, I get it for the purposes of, the, of trying to point out that Allison had met her and was a cunt. Mm. Doesn't work, doesn't make sense. It's so confusing. It doesn't check out with the timelines of everything. Um, Then Sean Farris. Sleepover. Sleepover, the king of Alexa Vegas sleepover. He is so hot. His mole. (sighs) Look, I'm going to say he's hot every episode. He is. Holbrook. He can hold my brook. And I didn't know his name was Gabriel, like uh, I think Mm. in the 12-year-old's. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm like Gabriel. Oh Sla- my God. More like Slabriel. He's hot. And he has like a, not like a lisp, but like kind of like a tight jaw or something. Like he, I can't remember, but he spoke in like kind of a, a tight way. He's got TMJ. He's got TMJ. So do Sexy. I. Sexy. 
sexy canna. Why are all their like detectives and like so hot? <laughs> it's the Rosewood way. What the fuck? Um, and then he basically asks the girls like, this is after the funeral, after by the funeral, way. Post funeral Sorry. on the steps of the church. He's like, "Why did you guys come to Wilden's funeral? It seems like like he was. Har- they're like he was yeah. pretty much harassing us." He's like, "I know." He's like, "I know. I'm really sorry about that." But then, why would you come to his funeral? And there's like a pause of like, Ugh. and he's like, "I'm the good guy. Like we're the good guys. So Don't worry about it's it. It's time for bad. For but ba- we've had the bad cop. Now it's time for good cop. Basically, then the girls get a text that says the truth won't set you free, bitches. And then um, Mona joins in and it's like, "I'm, I'm going to bury, bury you with, with it." it kisses a so now a is officially and there's attached is a video of them at wilden's car of no. them yes after the lodge yes taking the hard drive and like opening the pig boot yes it basically takes us to the video from the start of this episode and then um the classic pilot crane shot zoom out takes us out of and i love that the location. shot it's beautiful it's it iconic. centers me and then we have an A scene where A is playing in the layer with. I wrote dolls, dolls, dolls. <laughs> dolls, guys and dolls, more like dolls and dolls. Just dolls and dolls. There's a little dollhouse with all the dolls, and she's now grabbing a Mona doll and putting that in the little dollhouse, being like, yep, now Mona's in on the, the gang. And it's the same dolls that those little girls had. Little girl. The inventory <laughs> that, genuinely, the, the inventory. inventory that A has to have. The A inventory. Yeah. Inventory, the inventory that A Mm. has, like the administrative prowess, the administrative chops, if you will, and I will, please, I did. Yes, A is is doing that, and then we see that this A is the person who was wearing the sexy black veil, the veil, the hot chick starring Rob Schneider, one of my favorite movies as a kid. (laughs) I watched it so many times. Have we, we all we all had a hot chick phase. It's Rachel McAdams, it's Anna Faris, like a Rob Schneider. <laughs> um, wow. um, the hot chick in the veil takes off the her veil. veil and she's wearing like that alley mask that's fucked. Creepy. Sorry. Poor Ally, it's, it's very disrespectful to her looks. It is because she's beautiful. And it has a big burn on it. On one side, which would say that this person is red scrot. Itchy red scrot. And that is that episode, Haley. What a treat! We have to we have to go straight into the segments yep. because we I have reckon. we have we, we, <laughs> okay time for some seggies, some segments, some seg rolls. rolls. Head to our Instagram call dot and dot adults. Ah. One of the pin posts explains all these stupid segments. Get on board. Get on board. Okay, the hottest adult of the episode was Sean Farris. <laughs> Sean Farris, I agree. I'm not letting you say anything else. When he came on the screen, I was like, Sean Farris, oh, la, la, la. Prum. yeah, big prom. He's sexy. Sexy. Um, can I just start my manners? Girl, He's like trying you- to arrest me. <laughs> and I'm like, just not in the chicken. Ooh, like the ceiling can't hold us. Like the city can't hold the ceiling. <laughs> who gets a buttercream from us, Daddy Hastings? So who did a good job? Emily with those wigs. Sorry, sorry. Hannah with those wigs. <laughs> Hannah with the wigs. Hannah with the wigs. Great job. Um, Dying your hair when you're not supposed to get is it. Is it weird to give it to Mo? Like, no, give it to Mona. Mona. Mona's doing a good job. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I can't remember anything we've said. Like, I mean, buttercream to Mrs. De Laurentiis for coming back and living in the the haunted home of her her lost child. I agree. I burped. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me. Who? Oh, um. Oh, I missed you. Who get? What was the yikes of the episode for me? The pig. It's giving pig. The pig was. Um, also, Ezra being like, you can see other people. I've got a family now. Yeah. Get fucked. Get, sure, shut. Get a job. Oh, I guess he did. Don't get that job, though. Like, <laughs> get a different job. Get a job that's not teaching children <sighs> and high schoolers. Who needs to wait for Noel Khan's crazy bread? Toberki with the with the, the delivering RV. Come on. Toberki. Wait for that. To Berkey and A with like giving doll, like bringing kids in on this. Every time A involves children. Yeah. No. No. I guess A is a child, though, so who knows? What gave us a hard cover? Sean Farris. Sean Farris. What gave us a soft cover for me, pig? For me, pig. Pig and I would also say um, having to touch Wilden's dead body. Yes. Yuck that. Yeah, true. Yuck, yuck, yuck that. Who gets a wine from Byron? 
all the girls. I want all the girls to have a wine. Absolutely. Definitely Jessica De Laurentiis. Yeah. The, 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 Not too uh, – keep it healthy. I don't know what her like – One big glass of wine. Just one. One big one glass with, like, of wine. like a good meal. Mm. A steak dinner. Steak dinner. Um. Oh, and what was the line of the episode? Oh. I, I mean, I only wrote down the – to think we were this close to our first kiss and you wrote that down as well. So I think that's like stood out. There were probably it did. big ones, but that is the only – I forgot. Sexy, can I just part of my manners? I thought in a, for, in a wholesome way, Mona being like, I really loved you once and oh. I was really your friend. That was beautiful, but I do agree that – But, hey, they're both Janelle Parrish lines then. She gets both for both. I think Janelle Parrish and Ashley Benson, line delivery. Line like, delivery. And, and Lucy Hale. Lucy Hale can, especially land like a funny line. Lucy yeah. Hale can, and I, I okay. Well, we love Shay Mitchell, but she's not doing. Yeah, she's <laughs> that probably was the not doing it. gorgeous, gorgeous girl, gorgeous, gorgeous girl. girl, and that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> wow, season four. That was so fun to record. We did it. Everyone, we love you, Haley. I love you, Ash. I love you so much. Uh, we'll see you in a fortnight in two weeks. Um, we love you all. Where we'll pick up with season four, episode two. Yay! Oh my god! Also, this is kind of late. Like, I don't know when this will come out. Like, because the Wicked trailer dropped on the Super Bowl oh. weekend. But did you hear like the like the Cynthia Arrivo like? like ah, 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 I'm not gonna try to do it. I, 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 it was like meaty. It was like ah, yeah. Ah, but it made me think Sorry, of you, everyone. and it made me think of this podcast. Let's do it the way that we were supposed to do it. Ah, ah, like the ceiling get older. City ceiling. <laughs> oh, and don't forget, everyone. Wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, please. Close. Close your, your damn, damn blinds. blinds. All right. Whether you're in the city, whether you're on the ceiling. Don't let them. Hold you. Hold you. Close them. Close them. Toberky. Toberky. Yeah. Friends, before you go, we just have to tell you, we both have Melbourne International Comedy Festival shows coming up very soon that we would like to plug. So I'm directing a show. It is called Oh Happy Gay by the group Mr. Act, which is three wonderful queer comedians. And it's just a really funny sketch show. Um, You can head to the Comedy Festival website, type Oh Happy Gay and you'll find them. And I have my third hour of comedy, but it is my first ever hour of stand up called Restless, which will be available in person in Melbourne or online live streamed. So if you're a listener, most of our listeners are not from Australia. Anywhere in the world, you can watch it at home. It'll only be available to watch online between the 2nd of April and I think the 21st of April of 2024. So get your ticket to watch the live stream. It's going to be so much fun. And if you're in Melbourne, Come along to see it. Come to the filming of the live stream on April 2nd at Stupid Old Studios or go to the Comedy Festival website. Look up my name, Ashley Up or Restless, and you'll see all the details. We'd love to see you there. It's going to be so much fun. You got to go. It's you got to come. I'm, I'm not biased. And you know what? If you come in person, Restless is right before Oh Happy Gay. You could, <gasps> you could do a double feature. Double feature. Double feature. Hope to see you there, friends. Wow. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Call an Adult. We appreciate you more than Alison appreciates immortality, my darlings. Please give the show some love by giving us a five-star rating and review on your podcast platform of choice. You can stay up to date on episodes by following our Instagram at call.an.adult as well as our respective Instagrams at Ashley Crapapp and at Hayley Tanto. Have a lovely day and don't forget, shut, shut your, your damn blinds! blinds. See ya! Call an Adult is recorded on the stolen lands of the Boon Wurrung and Woi Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of the land. Sovereignty was never ceded.